the time has come for us to read our last and final chapter of Flat Stanley. You guys ready? This is it. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Chapter five, our last chapter is called Arthur's Good Idea. For a while, Stanley Lambchop was a famous name. Everywhere that Stanley went, people stared and pointed at him. He could hear them whisper, over there, Agnes, over there. That must be Stanley Lambchop, the one who caught the snake thieves, and things like that. But after a few weeks, the whispering and the staring stopped. People had other things to think about. Stanley didn't mind. Being famous had been fun, but enough was enough. And then came a further change, and it was not a pleasant one. People began to laugh and make fun of him as he passed by. Hello, super skinny, they would shout, and even ruder things about the way he looked. Stanley told his parents how he felt. It's the other kids I mostly mind, he said. They don't like me anymore because I'm different, flat. Shame on them, Mrs. Lambchop said. It is wrong to dislike people for their shapes or their religion for that, for that matter, or the color of their skin. I know, Stanley said, only maybe it's impossible for everybody to like everybody. Perhaps, said Mrs. Lambchop, but they can try. Later that night, Arthur Lambchop was woken by the sound of crying and the darkness. He crept across the room and knelt by Stanley's bed. Are you okay? He asked. Go away, Stanley said. Don't be mad at me, Arthur said. You're still mad because I let you get tangled the other day? You were my kite, I guess. Skip it, will you? Stanley said. I'm not mad. Go away. Please, let's be friends. Arthur couldn't help crying a little too. Oh, Stanley, he said, please tell me what's wrong. Stanley waited for a long time before he spoke. The thing is, he said, I'm just not happy anymore. I'm tired of being flat. I want to be regular shape again, like other people. But I'll have to go on being flat forever. It makes me sick. Oh, Stanley, Arthur said. He dried his tears on the corner of Stanley's sheet and could think of nothing more to say. Don't talk about what I just said. Poor Stanley. I don't want the folks to worry. That would only make it worse. You're brave, Arthur said. You really are. He took hold of Stanley's hand. The two brothers sat together in the darkness being friends. They were both still sad, but each one felt a little better than he had before. And then suddenly, though he was not even trying to think, Arthur had an idea. He jumped up and turned on the light and ran to the big storage box where toys and things were kept. He began to rummage in the box. Stanley sat up in bed to watch. Arthur flung aside a football and some lead soldiers and airplane models and lots of wooden blocks. And then he said, aha, he had found what he wanted, an old bicycle pump. He held it up and Stanley and he looked at each other. Okay, Stanley said at last, but take it easy. He put the end of the long pump hose in his mouth and clamped his lips tightly about it so that no air would escape. I'll go slowly, Arthur said. If it hurts or anything, wiggle your hand at me. He began to pump. At first, nothing happened, except that Stanley's cheeks bulged a bit. Arthur watched his hand, but there was no wiggle signal, so he pumped on. Then suddenly, San Stanley's top half began to swell. It's working! It's working! shouted Arthur, pumping away. Stanley spread his arms so that the air could get around inside him more easily. 
He got bigger and bigger. The buttons of his pajama top burst off. Pop, pop, pop. A moment more, and he was all rounded out. Head and body, arms and legs. But not his right foot. That foot stayed flat. Arthur stopped pumping. It's, it's like trying to do the very last bit of those long balloons, he said. Maybe a shake would help. Stanley shook his right foot twice, and with a little whooshing sound, it swelled out to match the left one. There stood Stanley Lambchop as he used to be, as if he had never been flat at all. Thank you, Arthur, Stanley said. Thank you very much. The brothers were shaking hands when Mr. Lambchop strode into the room with Mrs. Lambchop right behind him. We heard you, said Mr. Lambchop, up and talking when you ought to be sleeping. Ought to be asleep, eh? Shame on. George, said Mrs. Lambchop. Stanley's round again. You're right, said Mr. Lambchop, noticing. Good for you, Stanley. I'm the one who did it. Arthur said, I blew him up. Everyone was terribly excited and happy, of course. Mrs. Lambchop made hot chocolate to celebrate the occasion. And several toasts were drunk to Arthur for his cleverness. When the little party was over, Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop tucked the boys back into their beds and kissed them. And then they turned out the light. Good night, they said. Good night, said Stanley and Arthur. It had been a long and tiring day. Very soon, all the lamb chops were asleep. The end. We did it! Yay! A whole chapter book that we read together. Our first chapter book together. Good job, you guys. I hope you love the story as much as I did. And stay tuned for... Friday is going to be our STEAM challenge about Flat Stanley. I'll tell you more details soon. Get excited. All right, friends. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.